You can apply whenever you want. There are no rules about what year you have to apply. You cannot do that with your finals. Joya back for another episode of the MCAT podcast. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, last episode, we jumped into kind of just building thoughts and what to think about when it comes to how do I create a study plan? What should I be thinking mm-hmm. about? What are common kind of pitfalls and traps when creating a study plan? But I'm really excited to jump into our next several episodes where we really dive into here is, uh, specifically for this episode, here's a four to six month study plan, what that looks like. And if it works for you, great, take it. If it doesn't, then maybe check in the next episode where we talk about six uh, month plus a study plan. So I'm excited to jump in. Four to six months, that seems like a lot, but that seems like it's the most common study kind of schedule yeah. out there. What do you, What do you think about that? I think it is the most common. It's definitely like what we as Blueprint kind of orient around. Our classes are 16 weeks, which is about four months. Um, And so I think it's a good amount because shorter often feels like a rush. Longer, you kind of risk starting to forget stuff, getting rusty or burning out. So it's a good amount of time. Um, I think four to six months also aligns for a lot of people who are used to a college academic schedule. It's not that much longer than like a semester and a little bit of extra. So a lot of people are used to committing to a set of academic things for that period of time. So I think mentally it works. I think logistically it's easier than trying to reschedule or like reformat your life for nine months or a year or whatever it is for really long ones. And it doesn't involve the amount of cramming that a one to three month plan would, which I I know like two people who've done that and they still have a a look of wild stress in their eyes. (laughs) So I think four to six months is a happy medium for a lot of people. Yeah, I tend to see students, both traditional and non-traditional, find a home in that range. Um, But I think for all of them, it's it's really important that they really schedule that well. Because four to six months has some wiggle room, but not a ton of room for like big errors. Yeah. Like if you're studying, if you're if your upper limit is six months, you can't afford to get like a month and a half behind at any point. Um, you can afford like a week here or there that you could maybe finagle and catch up. Mm. But it's definitely like it is important to be very judicious about your time in the four to six. Yeah. So when we say four to six months, the the first question that seems to always pop up is, well, is that full time studying? Is that with school and work and whatever other obligations are out there? W- Ideally, for a four to six month study schedule, are students exclusively working on the MCAT or do you think they can still be in classes and working in other things? I think they can still be doing other things. I personally never recommend doing nothing but MCAT. Um, You heard us on the last episode. I have a whole (laughs) spiel on that. You need balance. Um, I think four to six is doable with other things going on. I think you may find yourself closer to the six month end of things, the more things you have going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot is predicated on your initial like incoming academic familiarity with the concepts. But assuming you have taken your prerequisites, I think four to six is doable with classes, with work, with whatever. You just might have to get creative with how that time looks. The most challenging thing in the four to six month scheduling is how to get in all of the appropriate full length in that time because those are the uninterrupted periods of eight hours that you can't negotiate. You can negotiate everything else, pretty much. You can break up a day of studying into multiple two-hour chunks, easy for content, for question Mm. banks. But you can't do that for the full length. And if that's, I think, the the mitigating factor for a lot of students is being like, wait, do I have that many periods of uninterrupted eight hours? Is that possible? So that's going to be a determining factor as well. But Definitely, you can do it with doing other stuff, and you should do other stuff always. Let's talk about those eight-hour chunks, because that's a a big part of actually doing well in the MCAT is is doing practice exams and and building that stamina to be able to sit for eight hours. As someone is looking at their four- to six-month study schedule... Are those eight hours early on? Are those later? What what are those six months kind of broken into? That is a great question. So the way the six months kind of works, let's call it six months, is you start with a more heavy content review period in the beginning. 
So whatever modality you use on Blueprint, you'll be, have a lot of modules in that time. You're learning a lot of content. You're still doing questions, but not that many. And your full length are being taken like every other week, maybe every three weeks. You're kind of splitting them up every few weeks. You're not taking them back to back to back because you're still learning content. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of go into this middle section of a couple of months of very heavy content with applied practice. And you're starting to really hone in on your pacing in that middle section of a couple of months. And then your last month to six weeks is where you're very heavily focused on applied, applied, applied. You shouldn't be learning really anything new at that point. Like you shouldn't be for the first time encountering a topic by the time you hit that last six weeks. And that's usually where you see the full lengths go every week. You do a full length. It's the AMC materials. You're entirely in AMC material world in that last four to, that last like six weeks because those are the you know the test makers made those materials they're the gold standard and so that's kind of how that splits up so you need eight hour chunks uh, at least every other week for the first two thirds of your studying and then you need it every week for the last third I would say okay and then when it when it actually comes to those four to six months uh, again. Ideally, we, we haven't really talked about this, but ideally, kind of perfect world, you're taking the MCAT no later than March or April of the year that you're applying. So yeah. working backwards, kind of, you're you're getting into the tail end of a fall semester. Mm -hmm. How does that balance? What What are students doing? Because it seems like there's this balance of, I need to do well in my classes. Yes. I need to do well in the MCATs. Should I focus on the MCAT and my, my classes struggle? Should I focus on my classes? My MCAT prep is weaker. How do students find that balance? Students wobble on that tightrope, and I did too. <laughs> I think it's a really hard balance to find. I think one is to try and minimize the duplication of work as much as you can. So like when I was studying for the MCAT, I was in Orgo 2 and Physics 2, which are two things that show up on the MCAT. And so something that I did was before I went into studying for my classes, I would have my like MCAT list of stuff up and I would try to cross reference as I went to build some connections there that also kind of prevented me from doing the same thing twice and gave me a little bit of double duty. That was really helpful. And when you're studying for classes, if you've got classes that are unrelated to the MCAT that you just have to focus on, that's the time to build in content review about things that are low engagement, high memorization. And that's one way to really help yourself not fall off in terms of getting through the content, but you arrange the content in a way that is like the least mentally taxing. So yeah. if you know in November, you're starting to study for the MCAT, you're in the middle of like your horrible week for school, you say, okay, I don't have the energy to do learning brand new concepts for the MCAT right now. I do have the energy to do amino acid flashcards. I do have the energy to go through psych social terms. Let me front load those topics that are not going to take away from the amount of time I need to be deeply engaged in my schoolwork because all the content's going to get done at some point. Mm -hmm. Let me just arrange the topics in a way that makes sense to me so that I can kind of prevent mental fatigue. And then, you know, there's going to be some triage. At some point, you're going to hit a week where you're like, I just can't do MCAT this week. I have to, I have to study for school. And that's why when you make a plan and you're looking at your study plan, you'll get, at least in Blueprint, you get this like auto-generated plan that's beautiful but you yeah. have the ability to drag and drop stuff and you should. You should block off days that you know you're not gonna be doing anything yeah. and let the things be rearranged into the days, maybe a few days after finals are gonna be a little heavier. That's okay. I think something important about the four to six months is that in your content review period, it's not a copy paste every day. Yeah. It's not like you're doing the same amount of work in the same topics every single day. You can mix it up and you should to like fit school because you don't want your grades to slip. At the end of the day, you can retake the MCAT if you need to. You can reschedule the MCAT if you need yeah. to. You can apply whatever you want. There are no rules about what year you have to apply. You cannot do that with your finals. Yeah. You cannot just call your finals and be like, actually, I'm going to take this in three months. <laughs> yes. Like they will not, that's I'm not going to fly. So I think it's important to remind yourself when you're balancing which I like to think about it in, in the juggling metaphor. If you're juggling a lot of balls, remember which ones are rubber and which ones are glass. Mm. Don't drop the glass one. <laughs> if you need to drop the rubber ones, they'll bounce. That's okay. So I think with school, school is a non-negotiable. You, yeah. can't, you can't just like ask your professors to give you your finals next semester. 
I mean, you can, but that's a whole other thing. That's an incomplete. That's a whole process. Don't do that if you can avoid it. Yeah. So I think a lot of it's about reminding yourself that every day doesn't have to be the same and blocking off days. I say block liberally, block off more than you think you'll need. And then yep. you get a pleasant surprise if you show up on an off day and you're like, wait, I'm not busy. Let me get ahead on tomorrow's work. When it comes to full length exams, uh, those, those big eight hour chunks that we need to to set aside, how many should students be doing in a four to six month study plan? And does it really vary if if it's a six plus month or a one to three month? Do you are you pretty like you should take this many full lengths no matter what? So I have a I have a non-negotiable bottom line, which is that you should take all of the A and C full length. Okay. So those are five, four scored, five. one unscored, at least right now. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you should take all of those. There to me and to the way that I teach my classes, no A and C question should go unturned. Okay. You should do all of them. That is like if you're studying in one month and that's all you got like drill those AMC questions because those are the ones that the test makers made. They look the most like the real thing. Yeah. They, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's a duck. It's yeah. the MCAT, the MCAT duck. And so that's like my non-negotiable beyond that. I think it gets a little flexible based on what you need. Mm. So a lot of students will in the four to six months take eight or nine where they take all of the AMCs plus or minus the sample. I think you should take it. Some people don't because it's not scored. And then, for third party tests, whatever they may be. And you start with your third parties, you do them in the every other week schedule, you hit your MCAT stat, your um, your last like AMC month, and you do them every week. And you're like, woo, I'm done. And that's pretty good. It gives you some flexibility to reschedule a couple of those third party full lengths in the early months mm -hmm. um, with a little wiggle room of a couple of weeks, which is really nice. I like eight. I think eight is good. I think eight is enough to build stamina. Um, I think for students who really struggle with stamina, you may want more than that because you may not really have full lengths that are representative of anything yeah. until you've gotten yourself able to do an eight hour test. I see a lot of students have a big jump somewhere in like full length three or four because they like somehow their body like gets it. It's like <laughs> I'm here for eight hours and I'm not going to just sleep through the psych social section anymore. I've had a lot of students see psych social in particular go boop as soon as they like accustomed hmm. to being in an eight hour test. Yeah. And so the first few full length scores, how representative were they really, if they were kind of snoozing through the last two sections because they were so exhausted, that eh, doesn't really mean much. So you may want to tack on a couple more to make all of your full lengths genuinely representative of your content and test taking knowledge at the time. But for six months, I think it depends on whether full lengths feel like they're burning you out or not. Um, the main deciding factor is, do you have time to review it? Yeah. So I say never add a full length into your schedule if you don't have a full day or two available to review every single question of every single qu section the entire way through. Like you yeah. should look at every single one, including the ones you got right, yep. because a full length is nothing if you don't review it later. So I typically recommend an eight to nine range, all of the AMCs plus three or four full lengths of a third party of your choosing for the four to six monthers. I think that would be maybe insane for a one to three monther. I don't know if yeah. that would be physically possible. I have not tried. Um, for a six month plus or then the question becomes, are you reviewing them? Just taking them burn you out. If you get something like blueprint, you have 10 of them at your disposal that you could take all of. In my nine months, I did take 15 full length. I took all of my blueprints. I took all of my AAMCs, but it was this very long extended period of time that I didn't plan for. Yeah. So I got through all of my content in like five months. And so when I got these extra months added on, the way that I stayed fresh was taking a full length every week. Mm -hmm. And it worked for me. I don't think that's true for everyone. I think some people would be like, I actually just need to like take two weeks off and not look at this if I have to reschedule and then come back with fresh eyes and, and do a slightly more truncated schedule. That's just not how I felt. So it's not what I did. But I've had students succeed very happily at eight. And I think the most important thing for deciding full length is making yourself review them properly, and then not taking them if they're burning you out. Um, but non negotiable is the AAMCs. I would never tell anyone to go into the real MCAT having not taken all the AAMCs. Yeah. 
one of the um, amazing things, and I, I want you to bring it up, and f- for those of you listening to the podcast, jump over to YouTube and, and find this episode. We're going to show you the Blueprint Study Planner tool with, uh, I believe we we set it up for a six-month um, yes. study plan. I think this is like a five months did five which is little, right in the middle little middle yeah. um and you can actually see what the workload looks like with five months and the great thing about the the blueprint study planner tool is it allows you to kind of look at all of it and and have all of the different uh kind of subjects and, and parts of uh the course if you're using a course or books or whatever that you're supposed to be studying and then you uh, can can see that and go, yeah, that looks doable, or no, that doesn't look doable. Let me play with it a little bit more. Let me move some stuff around. So talk through what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is a um, five-month, a December to May, or I guess that's six months, end of December to end of May um, study plan that I set up for a, a, fake, um, a fake person. And it assumes that I'm starting today, that I did my diagnostic, and then it's kind of setting up all my modules um, and my full lengths at different intervals. So you can see the full lengths are not every week at the beginning here. And we've got a lot of modules, we've got a lot of content here. Mm -hmm. You can also see that there are some assignments of practice when I should be doing passages, but there's also this lovely little plus sign. So you can add whatever you want, you can add more. And I always recommend people add more cars. I think you should do cars every day. (laughs) Um, I love cars. And so that's something you could add. But then when you scroll down to the last month, you see, oh, this is the AMC heavy month and you don't have any content left. You've kind of done most of your content. A lot of these blue modules are like strategy modules. So you see them coming up here, coping with test anxiety, the test day experience and med admissions, things that are not content, because ideally you've learned all your content at this point. Yeah. So what it looks like when you get to the last month is you have a lot more free time but it also means that this is where you have to get personal and say, okay, based on how I did on my previous full length, I'm going to redo a module here, or I'm going to add uh, another QBank practice set, or I'm going to add a section of one of the full length exams that I'm not going to take. I'm only taking eight, and I'm going to break up the other ones and take them as sections, which you absolutely can do, um, as long as you're still taking some full lengths as fulls. And so you can see that the amount of content starts to really taper off in the last couple months. And you see a lot more AMC question banks, practice, discrete sections, et cetera. And that's the idea is that you move from very content heavy to very question heavy, because as you finish the content, you're able to apply it better to your different um, your different question banks and questions. Wow. Um, awesome. And, and just a reminder, everyone, if you just go sign up for a free Blueprint MCAT account, you get this study planner tool for free. You don't have to yes. be part of the course or, or anything. So Yeah. Um, and if you take a course, it'll show up in there as well. So this is as if I'm a patient, patient, student. Oh, God. This is as if I'm a student who is doing self-study via Blueprint. If you were registered for a course, your course like classes would show up in your calendar and the homework assignments would also be auto-populated in for you. So if you're someone who likes structure that you don't have to make decisions for, that is what all the classes in the world are for. Um, They're great because you have teachers, but a really undersold element of a class is it tells you what to do and when to do it. And you do not have to decide which module to do on which day. You don't have to move it around. You don't have to decide when to do a QBank. Like they give you that. Obviously, it's up to you to personalize that and make it as effective as possible for you. I think every student realizes at some point that they need either more or less of something, and then they can start to modify. Um, but that's what that's what it looks like, and that's what all of our recommendations look like, even if you're not using Blueprint, is content-heavy, taper more into question-heavy and a lot of pacing work, and then just hammer AAMC at the end. And that is pretty identical to what I did also. Um, and it felt useful. I think it would have looked very different if I was less familiar with some of my academic work. I would have had a longer content phase if I hadn't taken classes recently. Um, but I think that's the phase that is the most variable for most students is the is the content portion. So in four to six months, are you heavy content for four or are you heavy content for two? I think that's a that's a question that only you can answer. 